Hello and welcome to another edition of the Avid Screencast. My name is Christian Förster and today I want to show you how to change the field order of wrongly imported footage in real time. Now this one is going to get a bit tacky so buckle up and do check out the show notes for additional information if you get lost on the way. The idea for this episode came from Bauke of, once again, the Evidel2 mailing list. Check out Bauke's website on his great tools at videotoolshed.com. Okay, field order. Everybody hates it, yet we all have to deal with it. In most broadcast formats, like PAL or NTSC or 1080i, each frame of video consists of two fields. If everything works the way it should, these fields are shown in the right order. And everything is fine, just like in this graphic here. All the numbers are counted up from 1 to 6. And notice that fields 1 and 3 and 5 are up, and uh, 2 and 4 and 6 are the lower fields. Okay. When you import footage into Media Composer, it basically asks you whether the first field of each frame of the video that you're importing is the upper field or the lower field. Okay. If you make a wrong decision here, the imported footage will have a severe strobe effect, when, especially when there's motion. So something that should look like this will actually look like this. Very, very stroby. See, this is the wrong field order. The counting is all messed up. The two is before the one, and the four is before the three, and the 6 is before the 5, only because the fields are mixed up. The best way to solve this problem is to re-import the footage with just the opposite settings. So if you chose upper field first, uh, you now choose lower field first, and you know you should be fine. Now let's say your assistant editor or somebody, not you of course, not you, but somebody else imported something with the wrong setting, the original file has been lost, so, there, so there's no way to re-import, or it's just too much of a hassle. It would take hours and hours to re-import, and you don't want to do it, and, you know, you're screwed, basically. You're screwed! <laughs> well, there's an easy fix. You could just make uh, the clip progressive, meaning that both fields of each frame are set to be occurring at the same point in time. Just like this. In our example, the numbers 1 and 2 are merged into one frame that displays twice as long. Same happens with 3 and 4, as well as 5 and 6. Now that's a viable option, but there's some quality loss in the image if you do that, and you have less time resolution. Remember, each frame stays static for double the amount of time of a field. Okay, but it's a viable option, so I'll show you how to do it. Go to Tools. Effect Palette, use the Time Warp, just put the Time Warp on the video, open the Effect Editor, now you'll have the Motion Effect Editor, and say Source Interlaced, that's okay, Output Progressive. Use a good render setting. Don't use duplicated fields. That's a crappy, crappy, crappy render setting that should never actually be used, pretty much never be used, unless you do know what you're doing and you absolutely want to use it. I usually use blended interpolated. It's still real time and looks pretty good. So we'll leave it at that. And now your output is progressive and the strobing should be gone and you're good to go. Another great way to do this, which is actually lossless in real time, uh, but a bit more complicated, is to use a specific matte key on the video. A matte key is a composition of uh, three layers of video. The base layer on track one, the layer that is keyed on track video track two, and a third video layer with a black and white graphic see this is the black and white graphic, that determines which parts of video track 1 and 2 you will see. If part of the key signal is black, you'll see the stuff that's on video track 2. And everything where the key signal is white, you see the background. 
in this case, it's Berlin, Neukölln or Kreuzberg. <laughs> so how does this help us? I've created key signals for all standard video resolutions. You can download them from this week's episode post on avidscreencast.com slash ASC04. There is one. It's just the black line, a white line, a black line, a white line, a black line, a white line, and so on, and so on, and so on. So you have to import the graphic that is specific to your video resolution. Uh, I have a PAL project, so I'll use PAL. Go to the options and set it to image size for current format. Video mapping is RGB. Field order or for current format, that is okay because the graphic has no field order. And the alpha channel doesn't matter anyway because the graphic doesn't have an alpha channel. So, okay, and let's import that thing. There it is. Looks kind of weird here because Avid only shows uh, one uh, field of the image. <laughs> it only shows the field that it has all the black lines and, all, and the field with all the white lines you can't see unless I step through field by field. Now you can see it's black, white, black, white, black, white. So what are we actually going to do? Look at this graphic. We have three frames, each containing two fields in the wrong order. We'll make a copy of that video and put it right below the original video, but we'll advance it one frame, so we'll move it one frame to the left. With the help of the mat key, we'll actually make each second field of the top video disappear. What remains to the naked eye is this. All fields ordered just the right way. Okay, let's try that. I'll copy everything that is on track one and just paste it back to track two. Now we have the same stuff on track one and track two. Make sure that only video track one is selected and use the trim left key on your keyboard. It looks like this, it should be a map to your keyboard. If it's not, just map it to your keyboard. You don't know what you're missing. So press that button one time. Now you can see the, the video on track one is out of sync by one frame. But that's actually what we wanted. All right. Now let's take our scan lines and just edit that onto video track three. All you need to do now is go to tools, effect palette, key, and drag the matte key onto the top video layer. Now as long as your sequence is upper field first, as it would be with 1080i HD or non-DV PAL, you're done and good to go. But if your sequence is lower field first, as it would be with NTSC or DV material in general, you'll have to invert the matte key to make the strobing disappear. Do that by opening the effects editor and hitting invert key. Now you're done. You see, while the concept may be tricky, actually doing it is totally simple and easy and you know, one, two, three. <laughs> so I hope you were able to follow my cruddy explanations. Again, check out the show notes if you wanna know more about field order and stuff like that. But you know, it's good to know about that stuff. All right, thank you for watching this episode of the Avid Screencast, even if it was hard. If you like, go ahead and subscribe uh, to the podcast on my website, avidscreencast.com, or on the iTunes store. If you have any comments or suggestions, like future show topics or anything, drop me a line at mail at avidscreencast.com, or just comment on the website. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at twitter.com slash screencast and check out my Facebook page at avidscreencast.com slash Facebook. If you'd like to know what kinds of things I do professionally, check out my personal or professional website at editguy.de. And once again, thanks for your patience and thanks for watching. See you next time. Goodbye.